Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I've got a really fun pattern for you today. I mentioned before that I'm gonna be tying some warm water flies, some bass and panfish bugs. So I'm gonna do the second one today. And this is a crayfish pattern. I got this from Dick Stewart's Flies for Bass and Panfish. Now he's got eight crawdad patterns in here and I'm picking one of the simpler ones. This one's called Brown's Crayfish. Now this one was created by Don Brown, but I couldn't find any information on him. I mean, try searching Google for Don Brown. There's a million of them out there. But I did see one reference to this fly being tied out there. I couldn't find any videos of it being tied, so this is probably the first. Now one note on this pattern, Don Brown says he ties it unweighted and he's caught a lot of nice bass with this thing up on or near the surface. But we all know trout eat crawdads too. So if you're tying this to fish in a river, a fast current, and you need to get deep, then by all means, put some weight on it. Now it's not a hard pattern to tie. I'd say the trickiest part is the uh, squirrel tail for the, the claws. Squirrel tail is just kind of slippery, so you gotta take your time and, and be careful with it, but it's nothing that uh, a new tire can't handle. And there are no exotic materials, so most of you will have everything you need for this one. And it's a pretty cool looking pattern. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, Brown's Crayfish. Just a pretty simple crawdad pattern. Kind of messy looking, but uh, I think that's one of the intents. So I'm tying this on a, it's a size eight, two X long, you know, hopper terrestrial hook. I'm gonna put down a base of black 70 denier all the way to the back where the, uh, you know, where I'm gonna start the tail, or in this case, the, the claws. Now the claws on this, red squirrel tail. So a red squirrel, which is a little bit smaller than a, you know, gray pine squirrel. What some folks do, and some of the instructions were to tie a big clump on and then split it, but I found that to be pretty difficult. So I've been tying it on one, one claw at a time. So you can take smaller clumps and then uh, put it in your stacker, just to get the tips lined. Okay, after you've stacked it a little bit, let's check this out. Squirrel hair does stack pretty well. It's probably because it's so slippery. And which also is what makes it really hard to work with. So here's the, the first clump. And I'm gonna tie this on at least a, a body length. So switch hands and I'm gonna catch this in on the far side of the hook. Uh, just a couple of wraps right here. Uh, as tight as you can get them without it spinning around too much. But before we move on, well, actually, let's go ahead and bury this in. I'm gonna take some loose wraps up right here just to kind of lock this in. I'll take some tighter wraps going backwards. Okay, so that's fine right there. I might snip some of that fluff at the, the front of the hook in just a minute, but take your thread back. And we're gonna put a few wraps just around this claw right here to kind of keep it together, almost like you were doing a parachute post. So we'll take just, well, that didn't stay. Okay, that is one clump right there, but it's coming a little bit up, if you, if you see that. I want it more to the side, so I'm gonna just try to push it around a little bit, and it'll still spin on your hook, so that's fine. And then I'll take a few more tighter, securing wraps right there. So now that is coming off the side like I want. Back this thread up just a little bit and do the same thing with another clump about the same size. Okay, now I've got this clump stacked. We'll see how this one did. It looks fine. So try to get the, the same length right here and this one we're gonna tie in on the near side of the hook. You might want to start it a little bit closer to you. That way, if it does spin, it will spin it into position. So a couple of wraps right there, and I'm gonna take this back. And before I do that little parachute trick, I'm gonna go ahead and some loose wraps to just get this bound in right here. And you don't have to worry about the underside being, or the underbody being too thick, because we do have a pretty big thick yarn we're gonna put on it in a minute. 
So same thing here. I haven't let go of this, this claw right here. I'm going to put a few wraps just around this one. Got to kind of switch hands with it and switch hands with your bobbin and your material hand there until you get a couple of wraps right here. And this one can go right over right there. So now I think we can go ahead and put our securing wraps right there. We'll take a look at it before we're done. So those two claws are coming off pretty even. I'm happy enough with that. So before we get too far, I've got a little scruff right here. I'm going to go ahead and trim. Probably not a, a big deal, but why not? Okay, next component, let's tie in the wing case. All right, well, it's not a wing case, it's just a shell. I mean, we kind of call it a wing case, but this is a crawdad. It doesn't have wings. So this is turkey. Brown slip of turkey feather. You could use goose, just use anything that's uh, a fairly dark brown, I think is gonna look best. So let's get this caught in. We're gonna flip this over after we put our the rest of our body in. Okay, let's see if that's going to look okay when we flip it over. Yeah, that'll be fine. So let's just bury this excess right here. We could snip it, I'm sure. Not a big deal. Now, let's tie in the legs and then we'll do the body material. So for the legs, a brown or a dark ginger, or this is kind of a medium ginger, but I think it's going to work just fine. We'll catch it in by the tip and we're gonna palmer it up. This is just gonna be the, the legs coming off. So I'm gonna catch this one in right here, and I'm not gonna wrap it all the way back to where the I've caught in that um, squirrel. I'm gonna put a few wraps of my brown chenille in front of this feather, and then, because um, I don't want legs all the way up to the front, where in this case, the, the hook bend is the front of the fly, where the crawdad's head is. So that's going to be fine right there. Now take some brown chenille or yarn. This is a size small. Uh, use whatever you got. I'm sure black would work fine here too. But the pattern calls for brown and I'm going to try to keep it at that. So this is caught in pretty good and again I'm going to put a couple of wraps of this chenille behind that, that hackle. So go ahead and take your thread up to the front where we're going to finish the body. Um, but first off, I'm going to wrap this and I'm gonna put one nice big thick wrap right behind that hackle. And then just space this up. One wrap right in front of the other where it's pretty thick back here. And if you want to, you can start putting wraps on top of each other where you where it's not as thick. I don't think it's that big a deal, but if you've got enough chenille and you want to, and yeah, knock yourself out. Whoops, don't let it slip. I probably should have cut a longer piece of this chenille. I don't have a whole lot to work with right there, but two thread wraps should catch this in right here. We'll go ahead and snip this excess off. A couple wraps just to make sure it's good. Now I'm gonna palmer this hackle up. This is a hen uh, ginger color. And I've got a couple of fibers that are bound right there. I'm gonna try to pull these out with my bodkin before I spin it. There we go just might make it a little bit neater. And I'm gonna do some open spiral wraps here at the back. And then when I get up to the front, probably a little closer together. Or the front in this case being the, the back of the crawdad, the crawdad's tail. Okay, it's nice and big and bushy right now, but that's fine. We're going to use that wing case or shell back to kind of spread these legs out to how we want them. So two or three good wraps to catch off that hackle. Snip that off. And now you can either trim these on top or just push them to the side. I think pushing them to the side is fine. And then hang your thread where you want to catch in this 
this slip of turkey feather for our shell back. And just take your time gently, pull it over the top, and then we'll put a couple of loose wraps and check our position, make sure we're happy with it before we really lock it in. I think that shell back is gonna look fine right there, so I'm gonna put just a couple more wraps right here. Go in here and snip this off. And then smooth out this head right here. Got a couple of fibers going forward. Not a big deal, but if I can trap them, that'll be fine. And you don't need a big head. Just put a big enough one that you can whip finish and get your head cement on it. So speaking of that, let's put the whip finish on it. And I'll show you how we finish this shell back and the head in just a second. So critiquing this one, I could have made the body a little bit longer. I had a little bit more room up here toward the eye, but this thing is fine. It's going to fish just fine as is. So your, your claws are coming off to the side like we want. Now you want to take your varnish, or in this case, I'm going to use some UV resin, and I'm just going to put a couple of big drops right here and then spread it out all the way across this and harden this up. It also gives it a little shiny gloss too. I'm not sure if that's important for the fly, but a crawdad shell is pretty hard. And so don't be afraid to, to put a nice big dollop of this on here. Take the UV light and just harden it up. You can put two coats on it if you want. I put two coats on the last one. Uh, don't think it looked a whole lot better than just one coat so eh, one coat might be fine so there you go folks brown's crayfish uh, one of the simpler crawdad patterns i've seen out there not too difficult to tie the only challenging part is that squirrel tail is pretty slippery to work with so just take your time and um, i'm sure you can handle it just fine so that's it everybody i appreciate you watching y'all take care we'll see you next time